Although the Baraba Caves in India are among the oldest man-made caves in the world, their design is reminiscent of an almost futuristic spaceship. The incredibly smooth walls of these rock formations even appear so alien to some observers that they can only explain their existence through the use of lost advanced technology. But what are the facts about the history of the Barara Caves? How did people in the 3rd century BC manage to change the hard granite rock at all? And for what purpose did they use this mystical place? You don't always need a time machine to step through the gateway to the past. Sometimes it's enough to travel to the Janabad district in the northern Indian state of Bihar and make your way to the foot of the 300 meter high Siddishwa mountain. Once there, visitors are greeted not only by the sight of one, but of no fewer than four ancient cave worlds which have been enthroned in the landscape for more than 2,000 years. These are Karan Shapar, Sudamar, Lomas Rishi, Visva Zopri. And when it comes to the question of when they were created, experts refer to an inscription inside the Sudama cave. This reports that the artificial cavity was created in the 12th year of Ashoka's reign. He was a ruler in the Moira dynasty who ruled between 268 and 232 BC and converted to Buddhism after the bloody subjugation of Kalinga. The inscription also reveals who the cave was originally intended for, the so-called Ivika, or followers of a philosophical movement who believed that all events were immutably predetermined. However, the designs of the other caves suggest that, over time, they welcomed other visitors. For example, the horseshoe-shaped, richly decorated portal of the Lomas Rishi cave, which, according to some historians, suggests that Buddhist gatherings were once held here. Furthermore, the other inscriptions, rock reliefs, and steels from the 7th and 8th century leave no doubt that the Barabar Caves were also visited by Hindus in later eras. And while the caves were carved into the solid granite rock many centuries ago, their interior is relatively simple. The four caves comprise a total of seven rooms, which in turn had different uses. While some chambers were mostly used for gatherings of believers, others contained a stupa, a sacred hill-like structure in which special relics were kept. And yet, it is not the stupas that made the Barabar Caves famous far beyond the borders of India, but their amazingly smooth, elaborately polished walls. In detail, the walls and ceilings are so smooth that they almost have a mirror-like property. But the mirror-polished surfaces don't just make a lasting visual impression. The so-called Moraya polish also ensures that the rooms have a unique echo effect. The acoustics that have been created here miraculously amplify even the quietest sound. Given this, the cave's intriguing properties have also given rise to many a fascinating theory. After all, who knows, perhaps the complex was intentionally designed to amplify certain frequencies to facilitate meditation or access to new states of consciousness. But that's not all. Some people are firmly convinced that our ancestors knew exactly about the power inherent in sound. Consequently, they would also have produced sound-based technologies that could move and transform even the heaviest loads in no time at all. And no matter how we evaluate these hypotheses, the idea that the Barabar Caves were used as a venue for ancient sound and resonance experiments is undoubtedly fascinating. But how did people, more than 2,000 years ago, manage to create such an impressive site in the first place? The Barabar Caves in the Sites of Alternative Researchers Well, the answer to this fundamental question depends primarily on who you ask. According to conventional wisdom, the means available to the builders of the past were, to put it mildly, limited. Consequently, the Barabar's caves were mainly carved into the hard granite using rudimentary hammers and chisels. There is no question that this work must have been both exhausting and time-consuming. But given the sheer size and breathtaking precision, many alternative thinkers believe it is almost impossible that the site was built with the tools of antiquity that we know of. In detail, it is more likely that the inhabitants of the Moira Empire had technologies that were far more advanced than generally assumed. Possibly, according to the theory, the rock was heated in some way before processing. But it is also conceivable that the cave creators had access to a higher knowledge that has been lost over time. 
After all, the amount of rock that had to be removed during the construction work was quite simply immense. Hundreds of tons of solid granite had to be removed just to build a single cave, and it would be challenging for our modern machines to tackle such a task. And what must it have been like over 2,000 years ago? Experts estimate that the amount of rock removed from the Barabar and nearby Nagarjuna Caves would have been enough to build a full-grown skyscraper. And in addition to this sheer volume, the caves are not just rough-hewn cavities, but carefully crafted examples of ancient engineering. The fact that the Barabar Caves are not an isolated case supports the assumption that this hypothetical knowledge must have been available to a larger group. In reality, there is a whole network of ancient rock structures in India, each with its own unique stories to tell. And whether it is the Nagarjuna Caves, the Yudaragari, or the Kandagari Caves in Odisha, or the Ahanta or Elora Caves in Maharashtra, the striking similarities that unite these rock worlds raise the exciting question on the connection between the different creator cultures. Some researchers even see parallels between the Barabar Caves and the legendary rock city of Petra in Jordan. Was the knowledge of how to create rock architecture spread over great distances? And if we recall the acoustic capabilities of the Barabar Caves at this point, the amazing properties of the Hypogeum of Hal Salafani in Malta also come to mind. Could it be that these various sites are evidence of a single tradition whose roots go back to a collective understanding of technology, astronomy, and spirituality? The Question of the True Purpose While the historical connections are still largely hidden, the inscriptions in the Barabar Caves provide researchers with a range of tangible insights. According to these, the texts also testify to the profound change that Ashoka underwent. Initially, the ruler was a merciless tyrant who would stop at nothing to expand his own sphere of influence. But after Ashoka had recognized the unspeakable suffering that his campaigns had caused, he fell into a severe personal crisis. From that point on, he renounced all further expansionist desires and, as mentioned, converted to Buddhism. In reference to this, an inscription on a rock quotes Ashoka as saying that victory on the battlefield is meaningless. All that counts instead is the victory of the Dharma, the victory of the Buddha's teachings, which are based on the so-called Four Noble Truths. But despite all religious change of heart, the Barabar Caves also raise a few more questions. Why was this particular location chosen to carve this artificial world into the stone? Was it because of its strategic value, its natural beauty, or perhaps its spiritual significance? Or was it simply because the area offered the best protection against nuclear strikes? Yes, you heard that right, an admittedly rather unorthodox interpretation from the alternative camp recognizes that the Barabar Caves as nothing more than an ancient nuclear shelter. To understand what this incredible claim is all about, we should first bear in mind that the site is referred to as Garatharagari in one of the inscriptions and thus as a place that also appears in the Mahabharata epic. This is the most famous Indian epic, which comprises around 100,000 couplets, some of which are said to describe an ancient nuclear attack. The often quoted passages speak of a glowing pillar of smoke and flames that was as bright as a thousand suns and incinerated the Varishnis and the Andahaka people in one fell swoop. Furthermore, this gigantic messenger of death would have contaminated all food and made the animals sick. In view of this description, the thought of a nuclear mushroom cloud and the associated radioactive contamination is not far off. But unfortunately, there is a small but crucial catch. Because if you search the Mahabharata for the relevant passage, you simply won't find it. In fact, the supposed atomic bomb quote consists of different paragraphs taken out of context that don't belong together at all in this form. Your click and the subscribe button go together all the more for that. Become part of our community now and never miss a new video from us again. See you soon!